Hey friends, today I'm Gurney with Creekside. So much fun. We just got a massive shipment of stunning perennials from our friends at Walters Gardens. As you probably know, if you are a follower of Gardening with Creekside, we have a fantastic working relationship with Proven Winners and Walters Gardens. Walters Gardens is kind of the home of all of the Proven Winner perennials, and they were fantastic enough to grow us some gorgeous, stunning perennials that we are going to plant into the berm in the next coming days. And I am so excited to share these with you. Now, some of these have been on the market for a long time. They are tried and true. These are some of my absolute favorites. That's why we have them. And then we have some also that are really new and just now coming out onto the market and be available this year and then next year also as well. So I am excited to share these with you. If you have any questions or if I don't answer a question specifically about a plant, feel free to look them up on provenwinners.com and waltersgardens.com because they will have all the resources you could possibly need to know about these fantastic, gorgeous perennials. So without further ado, let's talk some really fun, beautiful perennials. All right, so here I have um, the plants on the trailer and this is not all of the plants. I just tried to get at least um, a few of everything to show you. You can see what an amazing job the growers at Walters Gardens did for us. So incredibly appreciative. A huge thank you to Kata, who is um, the most amazing sales rep, sales representative, guru. She is fantastic and she takes wonderful care of us. And this woman knows her perennials and she knows what it's like to grow in the South because she lives in North Carolina. So I fully trust the things that she tells me and that this perennial will do great. You will love this. There are perennials on here that she said you need in your garden because I don't currently have any. So we have full faith and trust in Kata. But there are some in here that I absolutely love and adore already. So the, the daisies, right? So the Shasta daisies. This is Amazing Daisies is their line. And then within the Amazing Daisies line, there are different cultivars of the daisies. This is Daisy May and I am running solo here folks so I am going to do the absolute best that I can today uh, to get you the absolute best picture of not only the flowers but the tags as well. Look at that. Is that not stunning? So Daisy May is going to be your classic flower of a Shasta daisy and when you plant these in mass and when I say mass like I mean like two or three together or more, right? They are, make such a gorgeous impact. They're gonna be on the relatively moderate size, 12 to 24 inches. Remember, if you put something in a container, it's gonna be on the shorter side. If you put it in the landscape, it will go bigger. These are gonna be hardy in zones five to nine, and they need to have full sun. You need to have your full sun for your Shasta daisies, so that way you get maximum flowers and a nice upright habit on them so they don't get um, floppy at all. In the berm, I am going to be planting these in big groups together, right? So you can already see how just having these together right here with those gorgeous flowers makes a big impact. Don't take this the wrong way when I say this, but the plants themselves right now are on the small side. As the Shasta daisies get bigger, their whole mass, right? The whole plant, the body of the plant just gets really nice and big. I have some in my garden that are uh, a year and a half old in the garden and they are probably three to four times the width of this. So your base just gets massive and then the huge flower power. So imagine that you have, and I say this, you understand what I'm saying when I say this to you, that this small of a plant with this number of flowers and the impact that it makes, wait two or three years from now when they're full grown, oh my goodness. So love this. Now, also another one that is one of my absolute favorites is the Monarda. 
Monarda is bee balm, right? And so bee balm historically is like a very old plant. We've had it in our gardens. Our grandmothers had it in their gardens. But those older varieties would get tall and they were gorgeous and flower. But then as the summer went on, they would flop. You get a summer thunderstorm and they just kind of fall over. And they could be kind of quite invasive because they would send out runners and just kind of go everywhere in your garden. But we love them because hummingbirds love them, pollinators love them, and they have gorgeous flowers. Well, meat, this is Leading Lady Raspberry. And Leading Lady is the series. And then of course, Raspberry is that stunning um, raspberry, nice, intense, fuchsia color um, on them. I have these, this is one of my favorite like 15 perennials for the South. And I have three of these plants growing in the display garden um, at the nursery. And they are currently in full bloom. They are nice, thick, stocky plants. They only get to be 10 to 14 inches tall, which is fantastic in your garden. You can easily have them on the front of your border or you could have them as a middle row, just depending on what you have in front of it. But just gorgeous, stunning flowers on them. Nice repeat bloomers that just a nice, heavy, heavy flush of flowers. And of course, like I said, like our traditional bee balm, that the hummingbirds love it, your pollinators love it. Nice, really kind of a minty smell to it. It is going to be more uh, critter resistant because the bee balm naturally has that nice mint smell to it. I'm not saying it's critter proof. I'm just saying it's more critter resistant. This is going to be hardy in zones four to nine. And again, you on this one, you can do a little bit of part sun. So full to part sun. That means at a minimum, I would say five hours of sunlight. If you're not going to get your five hours of sunlight, you're going to lose your flowers. And that's going to be true for all of your perennials and annuals in general. If you have them and um, they don't get enough sun, then they can't produce all of these gorgeous flowers. But I love this leading lady raspberry. And again, what happens is that your mounds just get bigger. It is not that they send out runners. It's just that the plant just gets thicker and thicker and thicker every year and more gorgeous flowers on it extremely low maintenance. The ones at the nursery are not on irrigation. Um, I didn't even fertilize them this year, a little behind on that. So they are just great, wonderful, foolproof, beautiful, beautiful flowers. Next, we have two Akastaki that are new on the market this year. We were fortunate enough to trial these last year. Um, they sent them to us and I just I just lost a stem. Oh, it's sad. Uh, but that is the great thing about perennials is that um, even in the damage of uh, transporting that sometimes, you know, limbs break off, but that's okay because this Agastache is nice and uh, tough and can handle it. Now, this is the meant to be. So meant to be is the series meant to be royal raspberry. And, um, you're going to love these because they are just now starting to bud out. Let me show you that. Again, a nice fuchsia raspberry color. If you have a lot of sun and you have dry conditions, then the Akasaki is going to be fantastic for you. Hyssop is another name for it. Um, the Royal Raspberry Again, full, full sun. So because remember, these all are going into my berm. So the vast moot well, Every single plant that I'm going to talk about needs at least full to part sun. I do have one hosta that I'm going to share with you, but I know this is probably going to be more of a sun uh, video than a shade video. But the Agasaki, both the Royal Raspberry, and then let me go ahead and show you this one too, um, so you can get a, a nice feel for it. Then we have the, um, oh, I can't even, you can't even see that now, can you? Let's see. There's a there's a there's a leaf over it. All right, here we go. We'll try this again. The uh, queen nectarine. And I really hope this is getting clear for y'all. <laughs> Jenny's flying solo here, and I don't know if the tags are going. Uh, here we go. We're gonna try this again. Let's see. Here we go. Queen nectarine. Nice, beautiful peach color. It is just starting to um, put some buds out on it. This is not really the time that your agastaches are going to be blooming. These are a little ahead because our folks at Walters are so amazing, but these are going to be wonderful attractors for your pollinators. 
absolutely covered in both your honeybees and your bumblebees, um, the butterflies, everything just loves these plants. Now they are going to be on your size. They're going to be about almost three feet tall. The queen nectarine, let me get my tags right here. The queen nectarine, yes, is going to be just a smidge taller than your royal raspberry. So you've got this beautiful peach color, you've got beautiful raspberry colors, um, really like some dry areas. So full sun, dry conditions, they do not like to be fussed over. Just kind of plant them, make sure they get enough water just to get their roots going, and then you can walk away from it and it will be fantastic. Another great thing about the Agastache is Historically, typically, they should be late summer, early fall bloomers. So when your garden is starting to look a little sad and um, tired at the end of the season, I know that happens here in the south. I'm assuming that that happens maybe in other areas too. Because of the heat and the humidity, these guys will just keep on going and really are coming into their own. Much more of an upright. They are not floppy whatsoever. Very upright, gorgeous, beautiful flowers all over them. And so you're going to see as we go through these flowers that we have a lot of the pinks and the yellows. And so they all just kind of marry and mellow together very nicely. So two Agastakis on the list. Now, Let's talk about phlox because phlox is a wonderful, wonderful perennial to have in your garden. And we have been talking about this a lot at the nursery with our customers because there really are like every other flower, right? You have early phlox, which is like the creeping phlox. Then you have a mid blooming phlox, which I'm going to show you because it is in bloom. And then we have the later phlox, like the paniculatas. We have those as well. So if you can plan and have a little bit of everything, you can have phloxes blooming practically all growing season long and just massive, beautiful uh, flowers on them. So let's talk about and let me show you because I've got three phloxes that I know that you're going to love. All right, so let's talk phlox. First of all, we're gonna hit the ones that, that are currently blooming. So this is one of the plants that I did not have in my garden and cocktail was like, Jenny, come on, you've got to have this plant. So I'm gonna try, try to do it this way. Um, this is the opening act is the series and we have ultra pink. Now within the opening act series of phloxes, we have various different cultivars and different colors. We have several of these at the nursery. They are in bloom and they are absolutely beautiful. So this is going to be um, that mid bloom. So historically, typically, this time of year is when they are going to be blooming. Like I said, I, mine's blooming in my garden, has been for a couple of weeks, and they are blooming at the nursery. The ultra pink, um, it just is exactly what it says, right? Those beautiful pink flowers on it. You can see that the habit of the plant is going to be um, nice and tall and a little bit thin. So when I say thin, it doesn't have super thick, super big leaves on it. So that actually kind of helps it because you can get airflow in there. Historically, phloxes are really played with the powdery mildew and that is a problem, especially for us in the south with our heat and humidity, is that our phloxes will just get covered in powdery mildew. So the more air circulation you can have within the plant, the better it is. So don't crowd your phloxes. You want to give them plenty of room. Now, the great thing about the um, opening act series is that they are a nice mid spring bloomer for us in North Carolina and their size is very manageable. So 22 to 28 inches, so right at that two foot, two foot mark and nice, strong, sturdy, stems on it right it is not floppy the only time i've ha ever had an issue is like if we get a storm with like straight line winds well then you know sometimes <laughs> Even we can't handle the straight line winds, but this is going to be hardy in zones at four to eight and it is going to be full sun. Again, it's very important full sun for the powdery mildew to keep that at bay and to have your beautiful flowers on here. And it just is a nice long season of color and you can pair this with so many wonderful daylilies and um, different pinks and shasta daisies and all sorts of great things. That is what I do love about Proven Winter Tags, whether it's an annual, a perennial, a shrub, they give you so much information. And on the perennial tags on the back, it gives you everything you need to know. And it tells you plants that it will pair well with because you want, especially um, 
well, any kind of plan, I guess, when you're putting it in a grouping together, that they have the same conditions, right? You need to have sun-loving plants together. You need to have, if they like it really wet together or really dry. So it tells you what they pair really well with. Now, the other thing, the other series is going to be a little bit later, um, is the Luminary series. Now, in fact, when I, when I was pulling it out, I was like, I was thinking that they were, I had two different types of the opening acts, but I don't. So I have one opening act series with the ultra pink, and then here we're going into the Luminary series. Let me show you this tag. Um, here we go. Jenny's having... It's a fun day here. I get so excited talking about these gorgeous plants. So the Luminary series, these are gonna be your uh, paniculatas, right? So this is a Phlox paniculata, just like your panicle hydrangeas. The paniculatas, look at the, the bloom on that. Can you see how it has that nice, kind of that same shape as our hydrangeas, our panicle hydrangeas? But of course, obviously they come in all these different colors. You will also notice how much bigger and thicker, wider these leaves are than the opening act. These are gonna be a little bit later. So again, this is ahead of its time because it was grown for us in the greenhouse um, at Walters. So this is a little early. Typically they don't start blooming until, gosh, maybe like the beginning of june here so prismatic pink is going to be one of the new ones on the line there have been many on the line before in this series one of my favorites um is the ultra violet now ultra violet is more in line with how she would look in the garden right now so nice big thick dense foliage on it but ultra violet gets its name very very original, right? It is the most vibrant purple, the most vibrant violet you have ever seen in your entire life. It literally is like a neon sign. It makes the biggest, most beautiful statement in the garden. And if you can plant these somewhat in a group together, especially like in a berm where it's nice and big and we have lots of open space, then that is even better. This is gonna be a little bit taller, right at three feet. Still has those nice big panicle blooms. You're, you're gonna be hardy in zones three to eight, just absolutely gorgeous. Your conditions, as far as your soil, if you can have it consistently moist, but well draining, right? So it doesn't wanna sit in water. It just likes to have a constant supply of water and that it drains out well, which will be perfect in the berm because we're gonna have irrigation in there and it's on a slope. So all of that water will help drain it away. But phloxes, and they have a very nice, delicious fragrance to them as well. So we have got gorgeous phloxes and then we're moving on in to some beautiful sedums. Sedums I am relatively new to in the fact of really kind of growing them in my garden and <laughs> doing well. Um, I've kind of struggled in the past with sedums and that was because I was fussing over them too much. I was trying to give them some fertilizer no fertilizer, not even biotone. Um, they don't like compost. They really like to be neglected and like in terrible soil. So, so for me in North Carolina with my red clay, that is like perfect. I, I've got plenty of conditions for that. I was just fussing over it way too much. It was when I was, we were visiting Laura and she and I were planting some sedums together and we were talking about it. She was like, don't add biotone, don't add anything to your hole. There you go. When you add compost and fertilizers, they tend to get real weak and floppy and just kind of flop open and just, they just struggle. And so you want to neglect them. Now, look at this beautiful, beautiful plant. This is part of the Rock and Grow. That is a series from Walters. And this is Midnight Velvet, just a gorgeous sedum in the fact of, look at it, it is just that gorgeous, nice, deep, deep, dark color. Now, it is already starting to put on some buds. Again, we're ahead. This is not typical that this would be doing this this kind time of year. This is gonna be a nice little size though. It's not gonna be like two feet tall. That will include your flowers. They're gonna be hardy in zones three to nine, extremely versatile, right? In our different climates, full sun. Sedums definitely like the full hot sun. Give it, the, put it in the hottest spot in your garden, especially if you're in a zone three, four or five. 
put it where it will absolutely bake. You're going to pair this with like butterfly bushes, um, Russian sage, nepeta, lavender. Again, right? All of those plants that like it really dry. And this is a great plant because it will bloom that season extender. The whole purpose of when I'm planting and designing the berm on the nursery side is that I want four seasons of interest. This will give me late summer, early fall flowers and interest, and my pollinators will appreciate it because they will have a beautiful food source later in the season when everything else is kind of petering out and um, not doing so well. We have another sedum that I want to share with you. Um, this is uh, Little Miss, <laughs> Little Miss Sunshine. Can you guess how it got its name? Look at that. Yes. So another beautiful sedum. Here we have, this is the Walters tag, Full Sun, Little Miss Sunshine, because it is nice and petite, nice, really pretty green foliage, and it is yellow. Look at those beautiful yellow flowers. When my mama was helping me um, un pack all of these plants from Walters and because both of these are sedums right so they have the same growing conditions little miss sunshine is only going to get to be six to eight inches tall so she's not going to get much taller than this hardy in zones three to nine um, but nice and wide right you can tell that she has kind of that spreading habit how beautiful is this going to be so you put the midnight velvet behind it and then you put little miss sunshine in front of it absolutely gorgeous so that is i know exactly where these are going to go in the berm because it is up closest to the driveway it's under a maple tree and the hot afternoon sun just hits it and bakes that spot i already have some sedums on the um the nursery side of the berm and they are loving life and doing great so i cannot wait to pair these two together they're going to be gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous plants. Some more of my absolute favorite plants that are just surefire winners. They are just fantastic in the garden. Um, Amsonia. I have been a lover of Amsonia for years and years and years now. I first started out with the native varieties of Amsonia. And then as we came into Proven Winners and started getting used to and understanding and learning more about the Proven Winner um, Amsonia perennials, love these plants. Now, so what I have is, so there's um, some different types of uh, Amsonia. And so this is what they call a, like a th thread, thread-like, thread leaf um, Amsonia. And because it has very fine foliage, I'm going to show it to you first, if you can see, right? So the leaves on this are very skinny, very, uh, these very yeah they're like little threads right so you can see exactly how it got its name i mean there you go folks so this is my one of my absolute favorites this is string theory string theory again reference to those really nice fine leaves on it and on the tag there you can see what it looks like in the spring and then you can see the fall color on it because amsonia is just a wonderful native perennial and so many of these are native perennials um, i'm just skipping over on some of them because i just don't want to say they are or they're not but i know amsonia is definitely a native plant um, that is extremely adaptable hardy in zones four to nine so we can do a ton of different growing zones and it is going to be again full to part sun minimum of five hours or more but string theory is really nice because it's nice and petite it only gets 18 to 22 inches tall my um just the old timey the the true like native natives that have not they're just the original ones they would get really kind of tall and floppy and they would um, split kind of open as the season goes on as the wind would come through in the summer and just begin to be a look a little nasty in my garden string theory is not that case because it is nice and petite and nice and stocky you still get those beautiful true blue flowers on it in early spring nice little clusters of star flowers that are just gorgeous and this is going to be um, you're going to space them out about three feet apart from each other and again they pair really well with the hot, um, the shasta daisies and the hibiscus and just gorgeous plants but 
even though you get spring flowers on them, then throughout the summer, you get this nice green foliage on it. I've had a lot of people tell me that it makes a great filler for when you're doing flower arrangements. So a great filler. And then of course that classic gorgeous fall color that, um, we really want to welcome right when the cooler temperatures start to hit. So we've got the string theory Amsonia. We also have some Nephophia. Now Nephophia, I grew up um, here again. This is one of those grandmama plants that you have red hot pokers, right? So, but now they don't just come in red colors. So proven winners, they have the Pyromania series because um, all of these colors are nice and hot and bold. So the Pyromania is the series and this happens to be Rocket's Red Glare. And it is actually, we've got some nice little blooms on it right now. And even this is the time that it would be blooming. This is just now starting because we have nephophias in several different parts of our gardens. We have them in an easy scape. I saw my first bloom there. I've got a bloom on my cottage, in my cottage garden. So this is going to be when they do bloom. And for me, they are more continuous bloomers. Like I got, especially last year, once they have been in the ground for a year or two, we had just repeat blooms on it. Now you can see, right, that this is an older bloom. So it starts blooming at the bottom and it goes up. Yes, after a while, this starts to look a little unsightly. All you have to do is come all the way down here um, and take your garden shears and just cut that off. And then all of this beautiful foliage right here will hide that and then you're going to get new blooms that pop up from this. For us in North Carolina, my foliage is a semi evergreen. Now with the Arctic blast that came through, it did turn brown but it has a very grass-like appearance to it, even though it is not a grass. It is gonna be full sun. Within the Pyromania series, you're gonna have different heights. So this is gonna be right around three feet tall and it is hardy in zones six to nine. So it's gonna be for those guys a little bit in the warmer areas, right? And just a really nice, upright habit. You it do not have anything that is trailing or um, more downturned. It gives you nice height and structure in your garden. Love this plant for sure. And like I said, there's a ton of different colors within that Pyromania series. There's yellows and there's oranges. There's different um, shades of all of those in there. So nice, bold, hot colors. Now, here are some plants. I got two of them for you that um, I've never grown before. And I'm super excited about this. These are the ones that Kata was like, Jenny, you need these. I'm giving them to you. And I'm like, yes, ma'am. All right. So, Eucamus. So, this is going to be brand new um, within the Proven Winners line. Crowning Glory is this series. And here we have um, the purple purple rain and this is like a pineapple lily is also going to be its common name beautiful look at that nice dark dark foliage so purple rain nice dark foliage like i said 16 to 20 inches tall now the eucamus is actually a bulb so you're going to want to and it tells you how to do this you bury it when you're planting it you're going to bury it deep completely goes away in the winter time and it's going to be one of those later things that come up in your garden because they do love it hot zones six to nine 18 to 20 inches tall deep burgundy foliage emerges in late spring so just hold on just like with your summerific hibiscus we got to be patient with them and it will hold its dark color well into the summer. Um, it has a beautiful star-shaped flowers open a blush pink then darkened to a deep mauve Nice. So you're going to pair this with your hibiscus, your sedums, your agastache, your tall garden phloxes. All of those are going to have those same growing conditions on this. So we've got purple rain and then we have princess bride. Now princess bride is going to have that, I about lost one, is going to have um, a beautiful green foliage on it, right? So Purple Rain obviously has that beautiful purple, nice deep color. And then we have got Princess Bride, and there is your tag for that. This one is going to be, let's see, um, Habit is Prostrate Compromised, com Comprised. <laughs> 
I've had a little extra coffee this morning, can you tell? Um, of arching leaves that emerge burgundy before turning a deep green in summer. So you're going to get lots of beautiful color on it. Citron yellow flowers turn a soft pink yellow blend. So, so much fun. These are going to be really fun for me to play with. Uh, but like I said, because I have never grown them in the garden and it's going to be um, tons of fun. Now, one, let me get back here. There's so many we had so many plants that mom and I were trying to figure out exactly how to get them here on the wagon. Now, if you've been around me, you know that I am a huge fan of perennial grasses. I think grasses, perennial grasses, annual grasses, I think grasses are really underused in the garden and just are beautiful, easy, low maintenance plants that bring such a statement. So this year, new to the Prairie Winds series, we have Niagara Falls. Now, Niagara Falls is going to be a really fun plant because it is going to be an upright grass. Basically, it is a four by four. This is just emerging, right? So you can see this is going to be upright. It is not a flowing. Well, it, it has a little bit of a turn to it, but it definitely is upright, nice height and structure. And then it gets those beautiful white plumes later on in the season most definitely a full sun grass okay this is a panicum grass so you need the full sun with it and it is going to be hardy in zones four to nine and it says it is one of the absolute easiest grasses to grow in full sun really does in well in any whether you have sand or you have clay it will handle it like a champ and then the only maintenance that you're really going to do on these guys is in late winter you're going to cut them back so if i don't know if you can see um can you see those little stalks right here? So the stalks were last year's growth. So you cut it back and then it emerges with all this like blue green foliage. It's gonna make a huge statement. Um, they were kind enough to send me quite a few of these because this is what I'm gonna use more along the fence of the berm. And I'm going to probably use some on both sides to really kind of fill in and give me nice kind of seasonal privacy, right? So that's why we love our grasses. If you use annual grasses, they're a lot like a faster grower. But those nice big grasses with this, a four by four, more on that fence side of the berm, whether it's on the nursery side or the house side, it gives you beautiful seasonal interest and privacy. So a lot of people will use grasses, the tall big grasses around their pool, right? Because summertime is when you need the most privacy at your pool. Um, so that's a great way to add some beautiful structure the wind blows and they move love them so we have got lots of niagara falls that we are going to be using now can you see this yellow you see this absolutely massive pop of color this is um tuscan gold and tuscan gold is a heliopsis so it is in that sunflower family um look at this you can see why how it got its name is that not just a ray of sunshine right there i mean it really is a beautiful nice solid gold color gorgeous plant i i saw these on the rack and they're all blooming and they sent me a good number of them and they are stunning 24 to 32 inches tall so another nice moderate size it's not going to be overwhelming in your garden most people don't have the massive space that that we have especially in this berm right most people have traditional gardens i mean it's crazy <laughs> right um, so even if you only have a patio my sister lives downtown charlotte she lives in a condo if she wanted to have a beautiful perennial in the full sun this would be a great option for her even just to have one in a container and if you wanted to pair it with something else down at the bottom low gorgeous but these are beautiful perennials that give you loads of beautiful color they're going to be hardy in zones four to nine very adaptable extremely showy perennial um, perfect for the sun and garden nice and compact right you can see that the habit on this is really nice and compact and there are buds all under here and then when you get it in the sun you're going to get more shoots coming off of it with gorgeous flowers of course um, this is going to pair perfectly with the grasses the echinaceas your sedums all of those now deadheading is not 
you don't have to deadhead this plant, but it is helpful. So if you can deadhead it, and when you go deadhead it, maybe you're going to do it, you know, once every two weeks or once a week when you're walking by just snip off the old blooms so that way it does encourage some new growth and maybe you, you will extend and get more blooms on your plant um, but it is not absolutely necessary now in the back way back there we have got some of the holy grails Summerific Holy Grail perennial hibiscus we have already added some into the garden at the berm big, huge, beautiful, massive dinner plate red flowers on it. If you do not have a summerific hibiscus, I would really encourage you to do so, especially if you can have, you have full to part sun. They are just wonderful plants. They love moist conditions. It can actually be a bog plant. It is a native plant, just stunning, gorgeous, long blooming, very fun again that we've put those in the back of the berm along the fence so it will give us a nice structure and height in there a plant that is not new to the market but is just a wonderful plant um, i actually added to my garden last year this is boom chocolata and boom chocolata is a geranium so it is a perennial geranium that is a nice low growing plant that you will love because it has its beautiful nice dark dark foliage on it and it does beautiful um, purple flowers and it is this time of year is when it is going to be blooming in your garden so let me show you the foliage on that nice deep deep rich um, almost a black color to it um, the more sun that you can give this the deeper and the richer your color is going to be 24 to 26 inches tall and that will include the flowers so it does have more of a i have seen more of a kind of a mounding wider habit to it and then your flowers are more like on the tall not stems but you know they go upright on it so this is going to be hardy in zones four to eight nice blue purple flowers and this is going to go really well with like eucharas lavenders your heliopsis like right so imagine those two together the tuscan gold and the boom chocolata would be really nice together and see that even for me right that is really helpful to see what walters is telling us to pair these with so when i'm out there planting it makes the most sense you have that beautiful Tuscan gold and then you come in front of that with the boom chocolata and you've got that yellow and the purple and blue flowers together. Oh, stunning. Absolutely gorgeous. Cannot wait to get into the berm and start planting these beauties. Now, brand new onto the market and I don't have a tag with these. Um, so let me get this other one. It's a little bit of a better, better specimen for you. This is an Artemisia. This is silver lining brand new to the market so artemisia let me come over here i'm dancing with the camera <laughs> it may look like you know filming's nice and easy it can be challenging sometimes my friends so here we go artemisia silver lining nice silver uh, foliage on it this is going to be a foliage plant you're not going to get flowers from this but Artemisias sometimes will get kind of a bad rap because they're wonderful low growing kind of ground covers, stay nice and low and then they go out. However, a lot of times people will use them as annuals, but when you go to pull them out, they send out roots and they attach everywhere. So trying to get it out of your garden is really challenging. Silver lining does not do that. You have your main um, root system, right? And then it will spread, but it's not going to root. So if you need to go in there mid season um, and clean up the plant, maybe it's just getting growing into somebody or is going into a path and you want to go and clean it up and give it a haircut, it's really easy to do because it's not rooted. I will have all of the plant specs up there for you because I'm not sure of the growing zones on this so i will have that up there for you that's what one of the downsides of getting brand brand new plants is that you always <laughs> sometimes the tags are not available when the plant is but silver lining really excited about this kata was really excited about this and really wanted me to have this and put this out so this would be something that i would put 
in the front of the bed, right, right there on the edge, and then have a nice contrasting color behind it. Maybe something nice and dark and green or like a black, something with a nice color contrast to it. So this really shows up and then highlights the plant that it is um, paired with. So excited about silver lining as well. As far as I'm concerned, you cannot talk Southern garden, really any kind of garden without addressing and including some daylilies. I am a massive fan of daylilies because again, they are just about the easiest plant on the planet and it is really hard um, to mess them up. They are a foolproof, fantastic perennial. And Proven Winners has a wonderful line of uh, daylilies in their whole line and there's tons of colors. So if you are looking for a daylily and you want a big, nice, huge showy flower, then you cannot go wrong with the Rainbow Rhythm series. So what they are adding this year to the Rainbow Rhythm, we've got two of them. This is Blazing Glory. Now, right now there obviously is no flowers. It is just the foliage, beautiful, nice grass-like foliage. But Blazing Glory, as you can see, is going to be a nice, beautiful golden um, yellow with a nice kind of a red with a little bit of a pink hue to it um, both on the edge nice ruffled edge and then in the center it's going to be 32 inches tall so you've got some moderate height there so this is going to be really nice in the middle of your garden it is going to be hardy in zones three to nine they are very versatile but what I love about the rainbow rhythm series of daylilies is their blooms are huge so this has six inch across diameter blooms on it um, nice bold burgundy red eye with matching edge nice well branching um, and you want to put this in the sun full sun, full sun to part sun really um, just a great versatile versatile plant so they have that one and then they also have this one is going to be so much fun cannot wait to see this plant in flower so I love these names y'all blood sweat and tears so there you go that is the name of this daylily blood sweat and tears so much fun nice bold bold color in the garden now this one's going to be a little bit shorter it is only going to be 28 inches tall and let's see how it describes it massive six inch raspberry red flowers um, complemented by a wide rosy pink eye that leads to a yellow throat so there you go um, very nice tough adaptable form these big beautiful mounds and then of course like with your uh, any other plant you have early bloomers mid and late bloomers so if you can pair your daylilies and get a little bit of all of those in your garden then you've got this great beautiful continuous display of flowers throughout the growing season um, and it just extends that bloom period right now some great there's four of them echinaceas so they're going to be new on the market this year we talked about them last year because we were fortunate enough to trial them here in our gardens and i absolutely love them so we have got four echinaceas that i cannot wait to share with you echinaceas cone flowers as they are also called are wonderful perennials for your full sun um, traditionally they like it dry and they are again one of those your grandmama plants right you your grandmothers grew these and were just a staple in the garden however I guarantee you that your grandmama did not have these uh, echinaceas because they are just spectacular now so we've got two different two different series um, and well let's see yes two different series it was two different colors in each one so a total of four so the first series that we have is going to be your color coded series of echinacea this is the fuchsia is bright um, and so i'm telling you they have the most creative names so the fuchsia is bright is going to be a nice obviously a fuchsia flower on it you can see we are starting to get um, the first now this is not the true rich color of it so don't don't judge this on the color that it is right now, but nice, big, beautiful flowers on them and that bright fuchsia color. This is gonna be 20 to 22 inches tall. Again, nice moderate. You can put it in the front or the middle of your bed, depending on how you're gonna um, have it planned out. Your spacing is gonna be like 16 to 18 inches apart because they get nice and big, like your 
the bulk, the body of this plant gets nice and big. Four and a half inch fuchsia pink flowers, beautiful overlapping um, horizontally held petals, gorgeous showy display. These are going to be beautiful. You're going to pair these with your daylilies, your shasta lilies, shasta lilies, shasta daisies, uh, salvias, those kinds of great plants, um, but a nice big bold pop of color. Now, the next one in that series is one in a melon and one in a melon um, this plant y'all absolutely blew me away last year um, and it is just a stunning plant now if you see this little packet and you're like what is that it looks like a popsicle those are actually um, some beneficial uh, insects so this is a great way that walters can control and um, keep their plants nice and healthy in a nice organic way so if you're looking, wondering what the popsicle sticks are that is what that is but one in a melon is a beautiful massive the flowers on these are almost as wide as my hand and it is a true melon color of a flower it is just now barely starting to open up don't again y'all they get huge right so this is just kind of that color and we're a little bit on the early side like the cone flowers should not be blooming right now but these are five to five and a half inch like cantaloupe colored flowers make a huge statement this is gonna be a little bit bigger 24 to 26 inches tall so a little bit higher but massive gorgeous gorgeous if you don't like yellow you think it's too bold you might want to try one in a melon because it's a more of a softer yellow um, just truly like a cantaloupe color it is a gorgeous flower now when we were talking about the different talks that i gave last year these are the ones that the people were like freaking out over because this is a going to be a double echinacea so here we have the double coated raspberry beret this might be the one that people are talking about the most raspberry beret is still going to be a beautiful that raspberry fuchsia color right now we just have gorgeous foliage on it right nice big wide leaves look at how nice and thick that plant is gorgeous specimen of a plant but it really is that double flower on it it's going to be 18 to 20 inches tall so nice and petite fully double intense raspberry pink flowers that are four inches wide so really nice big show on it and then we also have the butter pecan uh, butter pecan you can oh here we go you can see I'm getting ahead of myself but see where we're starting to have a little bud come out and so you can see how that is that double so this is going to be a lot tighter and then you're going to have your nice big petals coming around right here so the double coated butter pecan there is your tag for you um, just again again nice soft yellow on it this one is going to be 18 to 20 inches as well um, we've got some phlox flowers in there but echinaceas are one of those plants that love the heat so if you have an area that's nice and warm and sunny echinaceas are wonderful very very low maintenance and you're probably not going to find your echinacea in your garden center um, if you're in the south and the warmer parts probably starting at about right now and then as you go into summer because they do love it really really warm this is not going to be probably a plant that you're going to find in your garden center in early spring so that's why you need to keep going back to your garden center because they have plants available as the season progresses now hopefully this plant has caught your eye because as soon as I saw it, I was like, oh my goodness, this is a gorgeous, gorgeous plant. This is a Nepeta, and this is Chartreuse on the Loose. I don't have a tag for you. I'll put the information up, uh, but Chartreuse on the Loose is a Nepeta that has beautiful, nice chartreuse lime green foliage to it and then those gorgeous blue flowers nepeta's catmints are wonderful pollinator attractors um, just do great in the landscape now what makes chartreuse on the loose different than other nepeta's obviously other than its color because it's just absolutely stunning is that it is going to be a nice repeat bloomer with traditional cat mint we have to after it finishes blooming kind of gather it up and just cut it off and try to get another flush of flowers you're not going to have to do this to this plant 
I've already got lots of little buds up here coming in. Now, if you want to go in there, because some gardeners like to go in there and like to clean up the plant, you absolutely could do that, but it is not necessary. But it is a stunning color. Let me show you what I think I'm gonna pair it with because when we were pulling them off the racks and putting them onto the trailer, I put these, happen just accidentally put them two together. Oh my goodness, hold on. All right, are you ready? All right, are you ready? Here we go. Oh, Brenna thinks we're going somewhere. Because I said, are you ready? No, we're not going anywhere. Sorry, babe. Look at that. The Menarda, the leading lady raspberry with the chartreuse on the loose. Is that not gorgeous? Not only do you have a color difference in your foliage, the dark green of the Menarda, that bright lime green of the Nepeta, but then also the flower color. <sighs> absolutely gorgeous y'all i cannot wait to get out into the burb and start getting these plants um, in the ground it is going to be so much fun so chartreuse on the loose nepeta very excited about that one um, cannot wait to see how it performs as we go through the season again brand new on the market um, and i'm not even sure if it's available this year or if it's coming out so i'll have to i'll keep you updated on that one as far as as its availability and then lastly we have one hosta uh, available to us this year which obviously it is not going to go into the berm because my berm is a full sun so we will find a place for this these sweet things i have three of them we'll probably put them over at the nursery in the display gardens shadowland is the series of hostas from proven winners and walters gardens and this is a love story Love Story is a really nice um, variegated leaf. It has more of that kind of that creamy white center to it with those nice darker edges, has a texture to it, has a nice wave to the, fly, uh, to the leaves of it, and it is going to be 14 to 16 inches tall. So not a very tall hosta, but it is gonna be nice and wide. Like it could go up to three feet wide. If you live in a cooler area where your nights are nice and cool, so these are hardy in zones three to nine. So if you are in those upper climates or um, those upper regions rather, where they're colder, your hostas are going to grow a lot bigger and you can take more sun. Here in the south, because on here it says part shade to shade, we have folks um, that live in the mountains just an hour and a half away from us, but their elevation is a lot higher. They can grow their hostas in full sun. I have had customers that live in those colder climates and they can grow their hostas in full sun. Here in this, and where I am in the Piedmont of North Carolina, no, <laughs> I can take a little bit of morning sun and then it has to be in absolute shade as this day progresses because that intense sun for us will absolutely burn your hostas. So if you have hostas and they look beautiful in the spring, but as the summer goes on, they start to turn brown around the edges, that means they're getting too much sun and you need to move them to the shade. I, again, I have found that for me, where I am in my climate, that I can handle some direct morning sun but not direct afternoon sun. So this is where being a student of your own garden really plays in and you've got to understand where you are, your growing zones, and how your plants react to wherever it is that you are. Um, but I am just, I, can't, I hope you probably, you probably can't tell that I'm just so excited about getting all of these perennials. Cannot wait to put them into the berm and have the most fun. I don't have specifically in my head exactly where they're going to go. I do know that they, all of these are gonna go for the most part on the nursery side of the berm. That way, when y'all come to visit, you can easily walk up and down on that side of the berm and look at these plants up close and see them um, and just decide if that's a good fit for you in your garden. So I am gonna have tons of fun laying this out. Of course, I will show you everything. What, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get them in the ground and then I'm going to come back and do a tour and show you exactly where I place them and kind of give you my reasoning and thought process of why I put them in certain places in the berm. So another massive huge thank you to Kata all of the wonderful folks at Walters Gardens, all of our friends at Proven Winners for sending us these beautiful plants. They are gonna be so much fun and just a beautiful addition to uh, our new garden space at the berm. And I cannot wait to share them with you when you come to visit us. As always, we hope you have found this fun, informational, inspirational. Thank you for gardening with Creekside. Y'all have a great day. We'll see you in the next video. Bye friends.